How's it going, everyone? Mario here. We are fucked. Yes, that's how we're gonna start this video. Last week, we got the CPI exceeding all the expectations and gave another pie right in the face for the people who were saying, Inflation is showing signs of peak. I want to smoke what these guys are smoking. Looks like if you want to go on a diet, this is the right time to do so. Just pay for the gas to fill your tank in your car so you won't be having enough food to afford for groceries. Hey, easy. Prices of gas hit the average of $5 all across US. How fun. Food prices are still pushing higher. Oh, you can't afford it? You want to ask your employer for a raise? Nope. They are not going to give it to you because even their business is going underwater because of the increase in cost pressures. But hey, I guess that's what we get for having people like Janet Ellen, Christina Lagarde and Powell in the power of Treasury and Federal Reserve, huh? Absolute morons. Take a listen to this clip and you tell me if that makes sense. Here we go. I said that inflation would be transitory. What I was not anticipating was a scenario in which we would end up contending with multiple variants of COVID that would be scrambling our economy and global supply chains. And I was not envisioning um, impacts on food and energy prices we've seen from Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So um, as Chair Powell indicated himself, um, both of us probably could have used a better term than transitory. I do expect inflation to remain high, although I very much hope that it will be coming down now. I do expect inflation to remain high, but I do hope it should be coming down now. What the fuck does it even mean? From inflation as transitory, we came to inflation as not transitory, but it'll come back to our average of 2%. The inflation is going to stay with us for a while and we hope it will come down. What a bunch of clowns. Well, we don't have to waste our time talking about these dipshits. Let's move on to the technical analysis on SPY. What a bloodbath in the past two days. In my last video, I mentioned how consolidation works when it comes to technical analysis. Let me go in depth for beginners a bit, so if you are new to technical analysis, you will know what I am on about. Whenever a stock trades in range for a certain period of time, accumulation tend to happen. Longs will accumulate with expectations of a breakout to the upside, shorts will accumulate with an expectations of a breakdown to the downside. Consolidation usually tend to happen after a huge run up to the upside or after a huge drawdown to the downside. When a particular stock is in a bull trend and indices like SPY and QQQ are in a bull market, the huge run-up followed by consolidation can be assumed to be the particular stock building up energy before blasting even higher. This is what we call the bull flag pattern. But in the contrary, if we have a stock which is in a bear trend and indices are in a bear market, the run-up follows by consolidation cannot be treated as bull flag like we do in bull market because during bear markets, most of the time, strength will be sold into. In our last analysis on SPY, we only spoke about consolidation but never mentioned anything about bull flag because SPY is not in an uptrend. What does it mean? For example, in SPY, we are having consistent lower highs and lower lows. We hit 480 and started dropping from there. Every time we bounced, we never got close to 480. We got rejected at the number which is way lower than 480, thus lower highs. After every rejection is below the numbers of 480, we started forming new lows, thus lower lows. Bull trends tend to form higher highs and higher lows. Bear trend forms lower highs and lower lows. Now back to SPY. We were consolidating for a while between 407 and 416. In the last video we mentioned that if we take out the consolidation range to the downside, 
expect selling to pick up drastically as every single longs who have been accumulating in that consolidation expecting a break out to the upside will start selling as stops will begin to kick in. Selling begets selling causing a huge waterfall to the downside. Currently SPY closed under 390 on Friday. Opening lower than 390 opens doors for 388 and below that 385 will be back in cards. If we take out 385, it opens doors for testing the lows of last month which is at 380. If we do bounce from 390 and starts pushing higher, expect resistance at 395 and the big fat round number at 400. Above 400, we have the AVWAP from the lows sitting near 403 which also coincides with the 20 SMA in daily charts. The weekly ATR is at $17.80 which means next week ATR is expecting a move to either 372 to the downside or 407. Remember this number? Yes, top of the range to the upside. Rejection at 407 offers another opportunity to go short on if you haven't already. We do have an interesting week ahead. Any break below 380, the numbers will be updated in the real time to the members of the Discord and members of the Patreon. Go ahead, check it out, link is down below in the description. Join the Patreon if you want the daily updates on SPY and QQQ and the trade ideas every day before market opens. You don't have to pay money to support the channel, but what you can do is hit the subscribe button. It's for free. As always, take high probability trades. Manage the risk wisely. I'll see you guys in the next one.